Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is category theory. Today's topic are continuous functors. And you heard correctly, functors, not functions. Um, I mean, the name, as you will see, and I'm trying to motivate it along continuous functions, comes from continuous functions. But we really want to talk about continuous functors, which is kind of a funny concept because continuous usually is something that we would like to play off in real numbers or something, but certainly not in something discrete like category theory. So where does the motivation come from? Well, the motivation comes from the following um, picture of continuous functions. So um, if you remember your classes on analysis or whatever, when you, when you first heard about continuous functions, um, there are many definitions. The one I have in mind here is the one that's illustrated in this nice picture that I stole from Wikipedia, uh, which is not about continuous functors, but the Wikipedia page is about continuous functions. Anyway, um, so here the function x, of course, is the, the blueprint example, if you want, the prototypical example of a continuous function. Uh, probably actually the prototypical example are polynomials, but x was just a hidden polynomial anyway. It's kind of an infinite polynomial, whatever. Um, anyway, so the x functions, the e function goes something like this, as you can see here, the blue line. And what does it mean to be continuous? Well, the mean, the, what it means to be continuous is this equation here. Um, so it commutes with limits. It's kind of the definition or one of the equivalent definitions of being continuous and the kind of the one that I would like to use for category theory, right? And I don't really know what epsilon delta is, whatever, or something like that in category theory, but I know what limits are. And maybe that's uh, appropriately formulated kind of the definition of a limit uh, of a continuous function. Functor. So a function is continuous if and only if appropriately interpreted, of course, uh, it commutes with limits, right? That's what's going up here. And what Wikipedia tells us that Wikipedia can't be wrong. Keep that in mind. Wikipedia, of course, can't be wrong. Um, so f of lim is lim of f. And functor, maybe that's the whole point, should be continuous if f of lim is lim of f, right? Um, in an appropriate sense that I'm going to explain. And maybe the real difference that we should keep in mind here is that we are doing category theory. So here we have equality. So in classical mathematics, huge quotation marks, don't take classical mathematics too serious. But anyway, classical mathematics likes equality science. Um, category theoretical mathematicians like whatever equivalences or isomorphisms or whatever. So this should be only in a true up to isomorphism. So a continuous functor should commute with limits up to isomorphism, right? So why not? Um, continuous functions are just everywhere in mathematics, of course. So maybe the correct concept is one of the continuous functor. So let's actually have a look why we would like to do that actually um, and what we can expect from those functors or what can we expect. Maybe we find some nice classes of examples. The first example, don't forget vector spaces, of course. It's still the best category ever. It just has all properties you ever wanted to have. And yeah, let's just let's just have a look. Um, the natural functor I'd like to consider here, there are many natural functors from vector spaces to anywhere, but there's of course a forgetful functor from vector space to set. And this for the forgetful functor, you play around with it a little bit and you would like to talk about, well, whether it preserves or not limits because you want to have this uh, continuous property of commuting with limits. And kind of the example of a limit here would be the direct sum. It's a product and the co-product in uh, vector spaces, ignoring some infinite dimensional blah, blah, blah. Um, so let's just ignore that. And it's a product and the co-product in vector spaces. And then forget of the direct sum is actually a product and set, but forget of a direct sum is not a co-product in set. So maybe um, this functor, as you can see here, is continuous because it preserves products, but maybe the, the opposite is maybe not true. Maybe there should be also something like co-continuous, and apparently it's not co-continuous because it doesn't preserve co-products. Um, well, and we'll see actually what that means later in adjoint functors, uh, what it really means, but right now, the only example I can offer you here is again, uh, the forgetful functor, this time from top to set. And this functor is different from the forgetful functor uh, uh, from vector space to set because it has 
two adjoints. I shouldn't have said that because I haven't told you yet what adjoint functors are, but that's what it will be. And I will comment on that in a second later on. But now in topological spaces, you have two different products and co-products. They don't coincide anymore. You either have the product or the co-product, which is just a disjoint union. And they are the product and the co-product and forget uh, actually preserves both. Forget sends a product to a product, which is pretty nice. And it sends a co-product to a co-product, which is also very nice. So in this case, forget preserves limits and co-limits. I, well, in this, I just have showed you it preserves products and co-products, but you can check that it actually preserves limits and co-limits. Same here, you can check that it actually preserves all limits, but not, not all co-limits as you can see. Uh, in this example already. And yeah, and that maybe that's, that should be already the definition. I mean, if forgetful functors are very important in category theory, or at least very easy. Um, if they fall under this umbrella term of uh, continuity, then we actually maybe should just take that as a definition. So a functor is continuous if it preserves all limits. And you, maybe you want to say something like finite continuous, because you remember this difference between finite dimensional vector space and vector spaces it preserves all finite limits. And as we have seen, there should be a dual notion. So you can also say it's co-continuous, haha, something we can't do in classical uh, mathematics, or, or at least I don't know any co-continuous functions. Probably you can define that as well, but anyway. So it's co-continuous if it preserves all co-limits, of course. Right, um, so um, the definition is mostly really useful if C is actually complete. So if you have all limits, because then it kind of makes sense to say it preserves limits. If your category doesn't have any limits at all, it's a little bit of a boring notion anyway. Um, if you have seen set, enough set point topology and you're looking at very strange topologies on your space, so almost nothing is open and most sets, uh, most maps are continuous anyway. And it's kind of a little bit of a boring uh, concept anyway, uh, or where everything is open in, in kind of duality. It's kind of the same here. So um, this concept is mostly important for a complete, topolo uh, complete topological spaces. Yeah, complete categories like vector spaces. But then it's actually pretty good. So um, continuous is really the equation here, uh, which I should have written not as an equation, but as an equality uh, of uh, it preserves all limits and preserves always means in category theory that you get an isomorphism, not just an equality. Um, yeah, and then you could play around with this idea a little bit. You could talk about partially continuous functors, right? Like partially continuous functions that preserve whatever products, but not equalizers or whatever you you know what you can do here. And but let's have a look at more examples. Um, it turns out that it's not as well like like continuous functions are everywhere. This is not just not quite the case with continuous functors. It's not quite the right concept because we're living in a discrete world, but it's still fun. So that's why I wanted to discuss it. And it turns out that the pair forget and free is well for whatever, from, from vector spaces to set, from whatever groups to set, from monoids to set, whatever you can imagine. There's always a forget and free, well, very often there's a forget and free pair. And this actually example of continuous functions gives kind of the, the blueprint of, um, or the, the way to define edge joint functors in the end. Uh, what do I mean here? Well, here are some examples. So the first thing you would like to I just put on the slide, it doesn't quite fit to the story above here, but I would like to mention is that home functors are usually continuous. Um, this is pretty cool because some home functors are of course important in category theory, but more related to, to what I just said before, um, you have this kind of dual pair, let me just call it dual pair. Uh, in some sense, I should call it adjoint pair, as I said, but we're not quite there. So let me just call it dual pair of forgetful functors. They're often continuous and sometimes co-continuous, but most of the time they're continuous. They preserve limits. Remember the vector space example. They preserve limits, but they not necessarily preserve co-limits. Uh, so they always preserve limits and sometimes they preserve co-limits. So this only happens sometimes. The topological space is very, very special in this regard. And we will see later, as I said, with the edge functors. I really need to go to edge functors. Uh, why is this the case? But anyway, they're often continuous. They preserve limits, but not necessarily co-limits. And the free functors, they do the converse. They like to preserve co-limits, but they usually do not preserve limits. Kind of some strange duality is going on here. And as I said, this is kind of a stepping stone to define what it means to be 
an adjoint pair because this is kind of the example of an adjoint pair. Right? Um, anyway, let me wrap up. So continuous functions everywhere in mathematics could be, for example, defined via preserving limits. Continuous functions, uh, factors not quite everywhere in mathematics. Uh, it's not, not, not as a um, uh, great concept as continuous functions, but still pretty cool to think about uh, the functors that preserve limits, respectively co-limits, if you want to have them co-continuous. And kind of so the main example here is this funny pair of free and adjoint, or adjoint and free, uh, sorry, uh, free and forgetful, or forgetful and free. One of them is continuous, the other one is co-continuous. So something funny is going on here uh, with those limits, and we'll see that in another video. But for now, I just hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you like those continuous functor factors, at least as a concept. It preserves limits, right? It's pretty, pretty cool as a concept. Um, and I also hope to see you next time.